In this video, I'm gonna challenge myself to see what Lego creations I can make with a $1 budget. Then I'm gonna blow $1,000 on Lego and see what I can make with a $1,000 Lego build. Will this be a success or a failure? Let the challenge begin. As we go on. Okay, so to start, let's talk about some simple Lego creations you can make with a $1 budget. Oh, my bad, this is a two. There's a dollar. I googled it and apparently an average Lego piece costs 10.4 cents. So doing my math, that means that each build shouldn't take any more than 10 pieces to make. I'm accepting scholarships, Harvard. If you take one of these singular string pieces, you can make a leash for a dog. If you take one of these singular chain pieces, you can make a necklace for a minifig. He's really got that drip now. Or if you want to make a phone, you can use a singular black tile. You can also make a small pair of shoes using a 1x2 plate, 1x1 plate, and a small slope. Or you can make a simple couch like this that can seat a minifig. And to go with it, you can throw in a small table, potted plant, rug, and a lamp. If you have silver, gold, blue, or purple studs, you can make Lego game money. This is what being rich felt like as a kid. Or you can make a mini kit like from Lego Star Wars. Master Yoda approved. You can also make a can of soda. And since the Thor movie just came out, here's how you build his hammer. It just uses a bar piece, modified brick, and a few plates. And here's a flyboard made in Lego. Like one of those things you stand on and water shoots you into the air. Yeah, those are pretty cool. And here's a simple build of someone liking the video and spamming W in the chat. Since I love Stranger Things, here's a speaker to bust your favorite song and prevent Vecna from entering your mind. Comment what song you would play if you started hearing the clock. Next, I went onto Instagram to ask what you thought would be some cool $1 builds, and we had some good responses. Well, most of you had good responses. Here's a giant hamburger for a minifig that uses some round plates. And here's an electric piano, but to make the keys, I used some of these grill pieces. Here's a gumball machine, and for the candy, I used colorful studs. And here's a toilet. Someone suggested guns, so I built three. The first one is a flamethrower, pretty fire. I also made two more custom designs that you can make using authentic Lego parts. Here's a micro scale TIE fighter from Star Wars. And here's a basic looking microwave. Someone suggested a Minecraft chest, and instead of making the default ones from the sets, I made a custom one that looks a little more accurate. And since we're on the topic of Minecraft, here's an anvil as well as a potion bottle. Steve approves. And here's a micro scale house. And since micro is really helpful when you don't have many parts, here's a hell helicopter to go with it. We also can't forget about illegal building techniques, so here's a few. First off, you can make a minifig briefcase using a handcuff piece and two plates. And similar to the briefcase, here's a handbag that uses a modified brick and a bucket handle. You can also take this clip piece and a ball joint and boom, you have a working hinge. Or you can take this clip piece and make two circle plates face in opposite directions. And if you want to face two bricks in opposite directions, you can use two flowers. Who thought that something so cute and innocent could actually get the cops called on you? Okay, so my next step was to ask a couple friend Lego YouTubers who could share some ideas. Our first suspect is Riley. Okay, what's up, Riley? I know that you're a really good builder, and uh, I'm looking for $1 Lego ideas. What do you got, my boy? The first idea I have is a Lego fidget toy. It's built with 10 pieces, so it should be under a dollar, and you literally just fidget with it. The next thing I have is a Lego minifigure scale blaster. I used the Lego whip piece for the cable on the back, and then for the final build, I took a Lego Dots bracelet and added some stud shooters. You can actually just whip this on. Those are actually really fire Riley. They make me want a boogie. Mm -hmm. Our next target is Sacred Bricks. Okay, boys and girls, we got Sacred on the call, and uh, he's gonna share some $1 ideas with us. Alright, first idea. We got ourselves a pickle. Huh? You know, you always gotta have a pickle in your burgers. Yo, I like the transparent pieces you use, though, like, for, like, the juiciness. I'm gonna throw the pickle. Let's go. Ready? Yep. It's a shame it hit the floor though. That's a health code food violation. Next up, we got a really funny build. So I saw this minifigure right here and I was like, what if I recreate him as a minifigure but built out of normal pieces? So I made this guy. Yo, everybody comment below what we should name him. Yeah, the juicy pickle was my favorite. Yo guys, go subscribe to Sacred. Also go subscribe to Riley. Moving on. Thank you, Sacred. Yes. Ty, you gotta pay me more next time. As we go. And now, it was time to blow $1,000 on interlocking plastic and see what I could make. Now, 1,000 buckaroos is a lot of money, even more money than the world's largest Lego set right now, which is $800. Bruh. And I wanted to make this a super cool build worth that price. So since Lego comes with endless possibilities, I didn't even know where to begin, so I went onto Instagram and I got feedback from a lot of you people. The Great Wall of China, a life-size car, a futuristic city, an enormous glizzy, my dad using transparent pieces. <laughs> 
That's gotta hurt. But after reading several responses, a lot of you suggested making a castle. It's a broad enough topic to where I can be super creative, and LEGO's also releasing a giant castle this August. So I think we're gonna have to do that. Okay, so after deciding what to build, it was time to go on to the world's largest online LEGO store by the name of Bricklink and search for pieces. Spending a thousand bucks on LEGO seems pretty outrageous, but my friend Nate from ND Toys offered to give me a 30% discount if I shopped on his store. So I wanna give him a huge thanks in this video because he's really saving my butt. And I'm also gonna link both his Bricklink store, which I'm about to order from, and his own website by the name of Brick Owl, where you can also buy tons of minifigures, parts, and sets. If you go to Brick Owl and use code TD15 at checkout, you can save 15% off your next order. Nope, not car insurance, Lego. So go give him some love, go buy some Lego, and let's get to ordering. Not gonna lie, I am a little nervous because I'm about to spend close to $1,000. Since we're making a castle, we need pieces that scream castle to our face. Let's get 20 arches, 50 of these brackets, 100 of these. Honestly, I'm just grabbing for whatever looks interesting. Oh, let's go. They got glizzies. We're automatically gonna have to get Bruh. some of those. Okay, people, we did it. Our cart is full. This is not daddy's money. So I'm gonna place an order on this now, and uh, we're gonna wait a week. I'll see you on the tripod in a week. Okay, so a few days later, the package arrived on my doorstep. I'm giving you free speed champion set. Yo, thank you. It was very heavy. What the? Well, here's what a thousand dollars worth of Lego looks like. Now, we're gonna see what we can build with all this. Timer begins now. Since this is a pretty expensive build, I also expect it to be pretty big, so I'm gonna use 932 by 32 base plates to build on. To start off, I grabbed some regular bricks and I laid out how I wanted the foundation of the castle to look. My next step was to build up the castle walls, but to give detail, I grabbed some modified bricks and even made my own custom ones with extra texture and color. And yep, I made a lot of them. I also threw in some slopes at the base of the wall just to add extra support. From there, it was a few hours of tedious work, but I eventually got the castle walls to be 10 bricks high. To cap them off, I splashed in some inverted slopes and some arches just to add shape and also make it look more fortified. Now that the first floor was done, it was time to add a second, but first I had to throw in some extra support. Now we can start making the second floor. So to get started, I threw in some plates. I then went ahead and added some short walls on the edge of the roof, a common thing I see in castles. Okay, so it's been about five hours. This is our current progress, and we still have all of these pieces left. Oh crap, that hurts. I also wanted to add some towers on the corners, so I started elevating the walls while throwing in some windows, and I did that for the front corners. For the rear corners, I went for a circular design, which I made using cylinder bricks, and to finish them off, I added some cool-looking roofs. At this point, we had significantly burnt through our pieces, and we had several empty Ziploc bags, but there was still more work to do. I felt like the castle was incomplete without one more tower, but I wanted to make this the biggest of them all. Since I had no bricks left, I had to resort to a sideways building technique, which actually turned out pretty nice. I also threw in some windows and added some more levels. And at this point, it was starting to look pretty fire and worth my money. It just needed some extra touch-ups and a chef's kiss. First, I started adding some landscape and also a functional wooden gate. Yes, sir, ski, and it does work. Now it was time to continue adding more landscaping, so I threw in some more green plates surrounding the castle. I also wanted to throw in some trees, so I used some leaf pieces and cylinder bricks to make them. I also threw in a few bushes, and I also added some bowls because this boy loves boulders. I like that boulder. And to make the castle extra fire, I built some torches and threw them around. And I did a few more touches, and finally I made the rear towers just a little bit taller. Okay, so at this point the castle's pretty much done, but I want to add minifigs, I want to add other, like, cool stuff. So then I went on to Instagram and asked y'all what I should make, and this is what we got. Someone suggested a market. So here's one that includes two vendor stands and four containers for some produce and fish. Someone also suggested some people fighting on horses with swords. Also an archery area outside the castle. This is a good opportunity for me to also throw in some forest men. A night with your mom. I've gotta say that's a really smart play on words. A dragon breathing fire and a working catapult. Here's a simple one I'll add to the outside of the castle where some evil knights are trying to get inside. A wizard. Da baby. Let's go. On top of that, I'll also add some horses with carriages. One which is transporting a prisoner who did an illegal building technique, and another which is transporting some delicious glizzies. You can't forget the glizzies, people. I also love old school minifigs, so I'll throw in some of those, as well as some other characters to bring this place to life. Donkey! And finally, our castle was finished. I've gotta say, this is a ginormous build, and it turned out way cooler than I thought. But the problem is, I don't know where I'm gonna put this now. 
Bruh. I do have some extra pieces because I didn't know how this build would look, but if I actually planned everything out, I could probably save a couple hundred bucks. What did I learn from spending a thousand dollars on interlocking plastic? Well, I mean, you definitely get for what you pay for, but I think I'm just gonna stick to making cheaper one dollar ideas. A hundred thousand likes and I'll do a two thousand dollar build. Thank you for watching, y'all. Also, we're halfway to a million subscribers, so thank you. And to celebrate, I became Spider-Man and helped arrest criminals doing illegal building techniques. Hope you enjoyed. Stay lit, my broskies.